All right, hey, what's going on everybody? Gratuitous here. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking to you everything you need to know about automation, okay? So I have actually written an article it's called The Ultimate Guide to Using Automation Clips in FL Studio 20. And what you guys can do is you guys can click through these to navigate to the article. And I just described to you all the different ways how we could be using automation within FL Studio. I also want to share with you guys that with my music courses, I have allowed you guys to try a three-day trial for $1. And if you guys continue, it'll be $10 per month after that. So this is my most recent course. It's on arrangement and song structure. There's 15 videos. It's about two and a half hours. We cover everything from the intro to your outro, uh, you know, chorus, pre-chorus, bridge all that kind of stuff. In addition, I also introduce you to a term that I've coined over the years called audio painting. I've written a book on Amazon. It's called audio painting. And the whole idea behind audio painting is communicating with your listener and preparing them for what's next in your song. It's a really cool concept. You guys will learn a lot in this course. All those links will be in the description. For example, my courses, as well as this blog article about automation, okay? So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing I wanna talk about with automation clips in FL Studio is if you're using third-party plugins, you wanna make sure that you're using VST3 versions of them. That will allow you to right-click on the knobs within third-party plugins. If you're using third-party plugins and they're VST2 versions, you'll find that you aren't able to right-click to create this automation clip. So what you'll have to do is just tweak the knob you come up here to tools, you go to last tweaked, and then you can create the automation clip this way, okay? Just make sure to test. Sometimes the VST3 version makes FL Studio crash depending on what vendor you're working with. But in my case, I'm using FabFilter, the VST3 plugins work great, and now I'm able to right click and treat this as if it were a native FL Studio plugin, okay? First of all, what is automation? So what you do with automation is you set it up beforehand, okay? So in this case, I have this filter here, and I have pre-programmed this. And now if I click through the song, you're going to see that it automates, okay? And what it's doing is it's building that tension, preparing our listener for what's next in our track. Again, with that audio painting stuff. So with FL Studio, there's a couple different ways that you can approach automation, okay? So there is with the playlist, which is right here, there's the piano roll, and that's to do with like event data. And then there's also within the step sequencer and you click up here and you can affect it this way. And if I click the drop down here, this is how you can access your automation clips. In addition, you can also click all, but I'm just gonna go unsorted and we're just gonna click a sound here, okay? Let's just click uh, this chorus here. This is just a guitar. How I like to create automation clips in FL Studio, how a lot of people do it is they'll just simply like right click like the volume knob here and they'll go create automation clip. And what that would do is I'll show you, it creates the automation clip for the whole song. And me personally, I don't like that. I'm gonna hold down control, right click and zoom in here. I like to highlight the area I'm working with. So you can either hold down control and left click or you can hold down right click to do that too. And now with that highlighted, when I create an automation clip, and you can create an automation clip with anything, it could be panning, volume, if you get into here, you can adjust like the attack or whatever, you know, create automation clip. So just to keep it simple, let's just automate this volume knob here. I'm gonna right click and go create automation clip. Now you can see that it's created the automation clip just in this area because it's like, I only wanna work with the automation clip in this area. Otherwise, it's just kind of annoying. Now, if you're working with a sound which you are affecting throughout your whole track, well then yeah, like, you know, I'd create the automation clip for the whole song and then you can kind of tweak it throughout. Now with this automation clip created, I'm gonna zoom in on it again. So what you can do is you can just right click to create a point and that's how simple that is. You guys can click in between here and you guys can increase and decrease tension. You can also right click on a point and you can select different curve types. For example, if we go like stairs here and if we increase this, you know, you can uh, adjust like your stairs like this. And then if you want to delete a point, you just right click and go delete. Now a really cool pro tip is just kind of copying and pasting. So for example, let's just put these two uh, single curves, okay? Now let's say I want to have another point the same value as this. So for example, if I right click here and all of a sudden it's like, oh, well now they're not the same. So you can right click, you can go copy the value and you can right click and paste the value. I've also written a blog post. It's called the ultimate guide to copying and pasting in FL Studio. It breaks down all about copying and pasting. Now this is a really cool pro tip for you guys. So right now, if I click on this, point here and if I hold on shift okay so right now I can't go up and down so this is a really nice thing to know so it locks the vertical now if I left click and hold on it first and then hold down control now you can see I can't go left and right and I can go up and down so it locks the horizontal okay again this is just a nice thing to know so again control locks horizontal shift locks vertical okay and you first want to hold hold down on it first before you do that. And as you can see right now, like it's following like the snap. So for example, if I try to drag it over to the right, it's going to drag it to like the next bar here. For example, like this, right? I can't go in between. If you want to go in between, you can hold down alt and it overrides like the snap and you can fine tune it wherever you want to go. So those are just kind of like the shortcuts. Now I'm going to show you a really cool pro tip here. Okay. So up here, 
you'll see that there's an automation clips tab, okay? So this is like for audio clips, automation, and patterns. So I'm gonna click on the automation tab, and this slide here is a really powerful tool. So right now with slide being off, I can drag this point and drag it anywhere within the automation clip, and it's just gonna stay like this, which is, you know, typically how you want your automation clip to be. You wanna be able to do this so you can edit. But if you uh, enable this, what's gonna happen is if you click this, it's gonna grow or it's gonna shrink this endpoint, okay? So watch this. Okay, so sometimes if you're working with your automation clip and like you don't know why it's doing this on you, again, this is really annoying because like if, all, if you just want to ex extend this just a little bit and now all of a sudden you're like, oh, I want to be there. And then you come back here and you're like, oh, I want to be there. And it's like, oh, you know, that's just really annoying. So just disable this slide and now you can actually you know, control your parameter just like that. Super, super easy. Okay, so now I wanna talk about an automation clip after you have created it. So what happens here is, again, FL Studio takes like a snapshot of the default value. So I right clicked, went create automation clip, and now it has literally stored it. So if I scroll up here, and if I go to patterns, okay, I'm in the current projects, patterns, initialize controls, you can see that these are the automation clips that I have created. It's kind of confusing on how FL Studio approaches these automation clips. So right now, if I'm before the automation clip, okay, and if I turn down this beginning point, you'll see that the volume is still staying at that default value that we initially created the automation clip for, right? But now as soon as I go to 89, you're going to see that this volume knob goes to this value right here, okay? But if I go before it, you see it goes back and it's just like, well, why is it doing that? Because my automation clip's down here. Now you might be thinking, oh, well, it's because your automation clip ends high. Okay, well, let's turn this down, okay? We'll do the exact same thing. So I'm going to click on 89 here you'll see that it's brought down in value, right? But now we go before it. So the way around that is once you have adjusted your value like this, you know, I'm just gonna click there and let's just say, this is how I want the automation clip to be. And even if it's before, I want this, this volume knob to be at this value right here, right? So what I'll do is I'll right click and you go init song with this position, okay? And what that does is it kind of overrides that initial snapshot it took when you created the uh, automation clip initially, okay? So I'm gonna click that. Now again, I'm gonna go back to let's say 88. You're gonna see it stays there, okay? But now watch this, if I increase this crazy, you're gonna see that it stays. And as soon as I go to 89 again, you're gonna see that the volume is gonna be at max, okay? Boom, okay? So if I go all the way down to zero, it's the same thing. But now I watch if I go before, you're gonna see that it goes about halfway again. Now. The reason why I'm telling you this is because it can get annoying when you're mixing your track. All of a sudden, you'll notice like sometimes the automation clip is in the right state. And then sometimes it's like, why, why is it all over the place? And the reason is just because of this. So you go to the beginning point right here. You're just going to go right click and you're just going to go init song with this position. Now, before we move on, I still want to talk about a few cool things that you guys can do with automation clips within the playlist. Okay, so right now, if I click on this automation clip right here. It has it highlighted. Now you can click on this, a pop-up will appear. And now what you have is you have a min and a max knob. So if your automation clip, if you find it, it's a bit too aggressive, you can dial in a min and a max. And this just allows the automation clip to kind of be like less sensitive so that, you know, you can be more aggressive on your points. You don't have to be so finicky here, but you can kind of dial in like a bottom threshold and a top threshold to say it's like, I don't want this parameter to automate any more than in between here. That's a really cool thing uh, to do. This on and off, this is just a matter of turning it on and off here. It's, like this, it's the same button, okay? There's an LFO. This allows you to kind of get repetitive sounds over and over. As you can see, I'm just kind of uh, tweaking this right here like that, you know, if you choose to do that. Now, this is a really cool one that a lot of people are unaware of. If you click the arrow here, you can go to Articulator, okay? And you can copy the state. So if you wanna copy one automation clip to another automation clip, you just go copy here, you go to the other automation clip, and then you would, uh, you know, just go paste and super, super powerful. There's also some other tools here you can use for creative purposes. You can also like flip this, for example, you know, that's kind of cool. Okay, and now we're gonna talk about the piano roll. How this works is down here, this is what you call event data, okay? So it's not so much automation. However, it kind of is because as the song actually plays, you know, you can automate these different sounds as you know, as it plays throughout the pattern. So what you can do is down here, you can right click and you have all these different properties. Now there's two different columns you'll see here. There's note properties, which is what you're seeing right here. This is how this would look. So if I would go to like, let's say pitch, you know, you can adjust the pitch of all of these notes. You know, all these notes would be affected by pitch. But in the channel controls, what you can do, I'm gonna go like pitch here. And so what happens is you can actually like draw in like this. And this allows for a little bit more flexibility. I personally don't really like this approach, I kind of find it 
kind of messy. And the way how you delete this stuff is all you have to do is you just click the delete and you can actually just, you know, click and highlight on it. So if I just left click, you'll notice that stuff isn't deleting. So you, you actually have to hold down and highlight and it will start deleting stuff. But even still, you know, it's just, it's, I personally don't really like this approach, but like I'm saying, it does give you some more fine tuning. For example, you can actually, in our case, let's say, let's say panning, you can actually pan a sound like halfway through the note. Whereas if we go to the note properties, let's just say panning, you know, you can only pan the one sound and that's it. Like if I want to pan this uh, right, you know, and I'm just looking up here in the top and uh, now we're going to go left. So, you know, you can only pan the individual notes. Whereas when you're here, you can actually pan in between, you know, so like it'd be like this, just for example. And one really cool thing I want to show you here. So what you can do in here, you can go uh, note, find pitch. OK, and if you right click and hold, you can actually increase it to go with something like this. And if let's say you had a snare roll, this is how you can kind of get a really kind of cool a build up for that rising kind of sound. Let's just go to velocity for a second. I'm just going to show you a few more things. So what you can do here, if you want to highlight multiple sounds, so you just hold down control and shift and you can like, you know, highlight multiple and you can kind of click or deselect. So in this case, what you can do is hold on alt now and the scroll wheel, and now you can increase and decrease the volume of just these, these notes only. Okay. If you click right here, just left click, you're going to affect the velocity of all four of these sounds here, or you can actually hover over individual notes too. And you can do that too. Okay. And the last way how you could be using automation with FL studio is within the step sequencer. Okay. So when FL studio 20 first released, they didn't have this option. It's the graph editor, but I guess because of community feedback, people wanted this back. FL Studio is really, really great that way. They listen to their users and they actually implement features that their users want. You know, super, super great company that way. So first of all, I'm just gonna click on the sound, okay? And we're gonna go graph editor. And now you can affect each individual note. So in this case, you can affect velocity. Uh, here's like the pitch, the panning, and this is even swing. So for example, like swing right here. So it just nudges a note. So you can nudge this one kick by a lot in comparison to the other notes, whatever. So lots of flexibility there. I kind of find that when I use this, many times I forget that I affected a sound using this. So just kind of be aware of that, especially if you're working with old projects and all of a sudden you go back to work on them or whatever. And you're kind of like, how did I tweak that sound? Like I can't find out, you know, it's like, a, was it with my plugins or something like that? Okay, so those are just different uses of, you know, using automation as well as uh, event data within FL Studio. So again, that's the playlist. That is the piano roll as well as here on the step sequencer with um, the graph editor here. Now some common ways of using automation, volume, panning, uh, filters with like an EQ and stuff like that. That's just really, really powerful. You know, for example, in this case, I'm just using this EQ right here. I created a high cut, you know, I highlighted the area. And in this case, I would click this um, right here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go create automation clip. And now this, so let's just dial it down. And you're going to see that this high cut filter right here, as the song progresses, it filters it out. And, you know, that's really, really powerful for transitions and what I call audio painting. Okay. It just allows uh, communication to our listener that like a change is happening, that a buildup is happening, and we're just preparing them to get ready. Now, I just want to share an important pro tip here with you guys. So if you're ever putting these like filters and stuff on your actual master track, I highly recommend that you turn it all the way off the mix knob. Okay. And you're going to right click. You're going to create the automation clip. And now right here, this is like the mix level. So in this case, I would move it over one. I would right click to, to put a point and I'm going to move it over one as well. And I'm going to right click to put the point. Okay. So if the filter was happening right here, I would automate the mix knob to turn on only when I want it to affect, because since this is like the master track, I only want that filter to be on when I'm automating it, when I want the sound that way, it's not affecting like my overall master sound or, or whatever. Okay. So it's, I just find that this is a pro tip that I've kind of learned over the years, especially if you're using plugins like gross beat, you know, things that really are really aggressive, you know, tons and tons of manipulation to your beat. Automating the mix knob is super, super powerful. Another way you could be using automation in FL Studio is with like, a, let's say a vocal, okay? So instead of using like compression to help level out a vocal, you can actually be using volume automation to help that vocal on certain words that aren't standing out, you can just kind of turn them up. And the benefit of doing this is it sounds a lot more natural than compression, because if you're too aggressive with compression, it can have negative artifacts, okay? So, you know, you can kind of use this volume automation in hand with some compression, because compression can kind of glue it together as well as have its own kind of characteristics. Uh, but if you use volume automation and compression, you, you can kind of get best of both worlds there. And finally, this is probably one of the biggest tips that I can pass on to you. I personally never like to automate the mixer fader. 
okay, if I was going to affect volume, for example, like we're talking about the vocal with volume automation, how I would approach it is I would click here. Let's just open up, like, let's say uh, the fruity limiter. Okay, so here it is, fruity limiter. And how I would approach this is this ceiling. I would put it all the way to the top and I would actually automate this gain knob. And the reason why I would do that is so then I have full control over this mixer fader still because as soon as you start creating automation off of these mixer faders, it kind of handcuffs you, okay? As soon as like your song starts getting bigger and everything like that, it, in my opinion, it just kind of gets annoying. So I would automate you know, a plugin like this, it doesn't have to be like the fruity limiter. It just has to be like, you know, any plugin that you can really uh, use gain uh, in a transparent way. I would personally recommend this way and, you know, push in your middle scroll wheel here and I would go gain. Okay. So I would rather open up a plugin, use this gain knob as my automation. Therefore, I still have full control on if I still want to maybe boost it up a little bit louder. Whereas if it was a vocal and we used volume automation, this has helped balance out the vocal. But if I want the actual vocal to be louder, I still have control over that volume. Okay, so that's everything to do with automation here. Again, you guys can come check out this article. You know, it's a re really in-depth article just breaking down everything about automation within FL Studio. Also, you know, come check out my courses, you know, join up, be a member. It's only $1 for three days, free trial pretty much, you know, try it out, see how you like it. And if you guys like it, it's only $10 a month. There's also a private forum and stuff like that. I kind of treat this as like a mentorship. You know, if you guys have questions, you guys can always reach out to me. I can create new courses on your questions and kind of build a real solid audio community. Okay. Also, if you guys want to check out this arrangement course or check out that book on arrangement, it's called audio painting. Okay. All the links will be in the description below. Hopefully this video on automation has helped you a lot. If you guys have questions, if you guys want to see a different video, just leave it in the comments below. I'm Gratuitous. Thanks for checking out the video and subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me.